Well, if you recall, we filed an injunction against Maricopa and Pima County seeking to prohibit the use of electronic voting machines because they're inherently insecure and they violate a you know a constitutional right to have a, a an, an accurate vote as well as equal protection. And we filed that with Kerry Lake and Mark Fincham as the plaintiffs. They were candidates at the time. Kerry, of course, was candidate for governor and Mark Fincham was a candidate for the secretary of state office. And we had a, uh, a full hearing in last summer in July where five experts testified as to why these electronic voting machines should not be used in elections, how they're insecure, and therefore cannot provide a trustworthy, accurate vote. The court dismissed that case based primarily on a purported lack of standing. Of course, you heard about many other election challenges. It's always a lack of standing. And standing is where uh, where a court has ruled that the plaintiff cannot allege an injury that a court can remedy. And so this is a uh, – it's, it's used quite frequently by courts on election cases, as we know. We have appealed that decision, and it is going to be heard by a panel of the Ninth Circuit – on September 12th, Andrew Parker will be arguing the dismissal of that action. We think we have very, very strong grounds uh, to have that decision reversed. And if it is reversed, that would open up Maricopa County and Pima County to discovery. In other words, the case would go forward with full subpoena power, with full discovery, and we would be able to put people under oath. And as as we know from Kerry Lake's election contest, there is a uh, significant evidence of uh, wrongdoing, unlawful conduct, and uh, and in particular with the machines themselves. Precisely what we argued before the November 2022 election, that, for example, malware could be implanted without anybody knowing, we found evidence of malware put on the printers that were used at the vote centers, at 223 vote centers. And those printers are what caused the election day chaos. They were printing defective ballots and also thousands of ballots that were a 19-inch image was printed on 20-inch paper. And what that causes the tabulators, when those ballots are inserted, they can't read them. So they reject those ballots. And the system logbot, to tell you the extent of this problem, the system log files for those tabulators show that there were over 7,000 ballot rejections every 30 minutes beginning at 6.30 a.m. all the way through 8 p.m. when the polls, even after the polls closed. It's, it was insane on Election Day. That's over 200,000 ballot rejections on a day when there were only 248,000 votes cast. And so... What happened that day where there was huge lines, a lot of frustrated people, people were giving up voting, lines out the door because they couldn't cast a ballot. And we know that there is strong evidence of malware because after the election in January, Maricopa decided to try to do an independent investigation into the printer issues. So they retained former Arizona Supreme Court Chief Justice Ruth McGregor, to lead an investigation. And in that investigation report, which was released on April 10th of 2023, they they recounted an anomaly during their testing, which was extraordinary. And that was they took 10 printers and they said that during our testing, four of the printers began randomly printing fit the page ballots, that's the 19-inch image on a 20-inch ballot paper that prevents it from being tabulated, they say four of the, four of the printers began printing random, random fit the page ballots, and here's the kicker, and this is a quote, none of the technical experts we consulted with could explain how or why that occurred, close quote. And as Clay Perique who is an extraordinary expert on cyber issues, testified that kind of random printing can only occur because of either malware being put on the printers 
or what is called remote access or uh, colloquially hacking. And since this was a test that was being conducted by uh, Chief Justice McGregor's team, remote access is unlikely, and the most likely explanation would be malware. And that's Mm. precisely what we warned about in the injunction that's at issue on oral argument on the 12th. 